it can still be an opportunity to learn. I will be talking about my process, sharing some insights as my work unfolds. If watching my work on my desk here will benefit you, I recommend switching to gallery view. And if you slide your cursor from the reference image to the right, a vertical bar will appear that you can click and drag over to the left to make my desk a little more 50-50 with the reference image. Hey there, Pranam. Great of you to join us. Um, likewise, uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, if you if you see me doing something that you'd like more explanation on or you're just curious about, um, feel free free to just speak up, say, Nick, what are you doing there? Why'd you do it that way? Um, and I'd be happy to elaborate further. Um, if you don't have something to say, I do ask that you remain muted just to eliminate any distracting background noise that may be, you know, traffic outside our homes or dogs barking or anything like that. Um, and also, if you're in the zone and just want to work and don't want to hear me yammering for the next uh, 50 minutes, feel free to mute me and just enjoy being in a community uh, with other artists practicing. And finally, um, I am happy to offer this program monthly with the Leo Marshut School of Painting and Drawing at no cost. Um, if you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation to support the mission of the Leo Marshut School um, at the link that I will be dropping in the chat right now. So with actually the Leo Marshut School, there's two programs coming up that I would like to highlight. One of them is a drawing class that I will be offering next month. So I am going to be drawing personally, no watercolor today for me. Um, I'm going to be drawing and I'll be talking a little bit about how, how I have the, I guess the approach or the process that I have developed um, after practicing and drawing for so many years with them. And actually I'm realizing I'm going to just take a second to sharpen my pencil real fast. So, and I will spotlight my desk. Beautiful. Uh, later, I don't need audio on my desk. And I am actually gonna put the reference image on my tablet on my desk. Because that's a little bit easier for me to see. Okay, so I am, let's see, let me make sure I can. Set point, boom. Since I'll be facing away from the computer, there we go. That's a little, a little louder. I don't know why my computer defaults to my microphone volume being so low, but I can adjust it. And at the same time, I will also adjust my just a touch. Okay. So when I start a drawing, especially a drawing from a reference, I almost always start with a rectangle that is roughly the same proportions 
as the reference. And I do that because it helps me with the composition. I use the frame that I draw as sort of a means to measure just where, where everything belongs in the, in the image. And actually seeing how small that is, I can make it a tiny bit bigger for us. Oops, for our purposes. So this a little higher. It's a little bit taller than a square, but it's not like a super long format. So I think yeah, there we go. This will suffice. And right away, I'll start noticing where certain things are. So like, you know, I can see that, okay, the mouth of this gourd really is in the bottom center here. The shoulder of her, to me, appears just a little bit less than two thirds of the way up the image. So I might, if I want to, you know, I might make a couple marks around there just to sort of approximate where things are. There's this fun shadow that happens on the back of her bonnet. So the right side of her bonnet that's in shadow. From the left edge of the image, I'd say that's about four fifths of the way. I don't get like a, I don't take out a measuring tape or anything like that, but this is just to sort of illustrate the kind of visual measurements that I'm making against the frame that I have drawn. And I found that generally pretty helpful. So right now I'm noticing that the shoulder on the right is a little bit lower, especially the shadow on the right is a little bit lower than the shadow, I mean, than the shoulder on the left. And voila, and I can sort of mark out where, you know, the edge of her gown hits down there. Just some basic sort of landmarks that I'm making for myself. Now, when people are drawing, especially when people are beginning to draw, it's very common to want to begin with contours, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. Contours definitely allow us to enter the drawing via form and shape, which is usually what our eyes recognize first or what we feel comfortable going by. So if that's your way, by all means, begin with that. I think for me personally, over time, I have developed much more of a light-based um, technique. So what I will do is I'll sort of figure out, okay, where are the lightest parts of this image? All right. So one, the top of the head, let's say, you know, the top of the bonnet up here. I don't know if that's actually a bonnet, but it's going to be called a bonnet for our session today, just for our intents and purposes. And you know, a little bit more underneath the, underneath the, um, the chin right there, sort of on the front of the milkmaid's collar, okay? And then there's another part down here on the forearm, really interesting, this sort of diagonal business. That's just the sh that shape of light on the top of the forearm, all right? So, I don't know that these, I don't, I don't expect these to be placed perfectly, but I like to get a general idea of where the lightest parts of the drawing are, okay? And then once I have that, I know that almost everything else could be, could be, is going to be 
ever so slightly darker, okay? So this beautiful background on the right side of her is pretty light, but I can go ahead and start just developing some of the background on the left side here. I'm not gonna really worry about making things, you know, worry about objects too much right now, but just know that I need to protect these three areas of light that I started with. And everything else I can sort of start developing. It's gonna, everything else is gonna be at least a little bit darker. So right now I'm working around the hand. Now I'm going up the arm a little bit. So right now I'm on her face again, just trying to get the shadows in, not worrying too much about features. Um, I draw with the side of my pencil. So I hold my pencil very sort of flat and almost parallel to the paper. Um, and I just, I like the wider marks that that gives me. I, I like, um, it just allows me to cover space a little more quickly that way. All right. So something, another thing I like to use sometimes is a graphite stick. So I have a little graphite stick here that makes some of the shading process go a little faster. I'll show you how that works. It'd be really fun, some of the marks that you make when you get out of this thing. But the graphite stick I'm using is pretty soft. So I am going to use it to embellish some of the deeper shadows.
So I'm really just going around sort of stream of consciousness, letting my pencil as my eye works all the way around the figure, just letting my pencil follow where my eye goes and apply some shading. One thing I like to really teach in any of my, my drawing classes or almost any class I teach because they so often focus on light is just how many different roles and jobs shadows perform in an image, whether it's expressing depth and perspective, expressing form, of course, light source, volume, shadows do a lot of work. They wear a lot of hats, a lot of different hats, play a lot of different roles in our work. And um, I think once you start, once you start recognizing how important they are in drawing, in painting, they quickly become sort of like the, the priority of what you focus on. All right, so I have sort of like a, a general emerging situation here. The figure's emerging here. I can work a little more in the background here, but I preserve the light on her, the top of her bonnet, the front of her collar, and the forearm down here. And the name of the game now is sort of finding like a, just developing the shadows that need to be developed and making sure that they're all harmonious with one another. So let's start up here. And, you know, I want to resolve some of this business actually in her face because it is so... This is a little kind of amorphous situation here that could use a little more articulation and definition. So maybe let's get to some of that now. I'm looking at that shadow right to the right of her nose. So doing this eye socket here, I'm not worried about getting, you know, an eyelid or anything like that, because truth is I hardly see one. I see mostly like an egg shaped shadow. Okay, and I'm gonna go for getting for that egg shaped shadow first. I'm gonna let that be the first thing that I worry about as I develop the, some of the things on her face. And then, you know, as I get more into it, I'll start, uh, I'll start getting into some of the nuance in that egg shaped shadow. But for right now, I just want an egg shaped shadow and I want that left corner to be really high on her face because that is contributing to my experience of her having her head just tilted that way, so. Now also notice how the shadow on the eye on the right is so similar in value to the shadows on the right side of her face. You don't have to worry about making it look like an eye. I think if you're chasing shadows and you're sensitive to what's light and what's dark, eventually, Those little eye sockets will draw themselves. All right, so let's go here. I can definitely adjust the shape of this collar. It's too large. And only now am I noticing this, you know, the front of her, of her dress, that dark snaking sort of crease in the front of her dress. I didn't see that when I first looked at the image. Only now by drawing it and really getting around to it am I noticing, oh yeah, 
that's that's there.
All right, so I'm about, we're about halfway through the session. I am diligently trying to develop some of the shadows here, but let me see if I could soften some of these things up. So generally, I like to work light to dark. And I do that because I find that it's easier to add strokes to make something darker and gradually work that way as opposed to trying to take away strokes to to make something lighter. I mean, you know, sort of generally when you work on a, on a white paper with pencil, you can harness the light of the page and you're controlling the darks with your pencil. So that's sort of been a strategy that has worked well for me. There we go. It's pretty remarkable just how dark some of these shadows are on the figure's face.
Hmm, I'm getting really tripped up on actually on this on the shape of this uh this milk jug down here. But usually when I find myself in that situation, it's best for me to just leave it alone, move on, work on developing a different part of the image. So I'm gonna go down here to the blue bottom of her dress. Um, and then, you know, come back to that section when I can view it with fresh eyes and I'm not so, I'm not like trying to take my revenge on it for, um, you know, being so difficult to draw. Um, if there's any parts of this drawing that any of you are struggling with particularly, I'd be interested to hear. No pressure, if you're in the zone, keep working, but um, I'm always fascinated to hear what people are, are working through. Oof. Okay, so up until this point, I was working with an HB pencil. Um, I've been favoring those lately to begin my drawings with, but now I've switched to an 8B all the way on the other end of the spectrum, uh, just to bring in a little heavier weaponry to this drawing, to these shadows, and really start picking out some things to, to some darks to articulate this, uh, this figure.
All right, there we go. Now we're starting to get some of that luminous effect that we so dearly want in this. I think I could soften up the front of her a touch, but we're getting there. This could be darker. All right, so back to the milk jug. Let's see what I can make of this. It's funny, when I was marking out all of the light parts of this image, I missed completely that, just that little bead of milk dripping out of the, the mouth of the um, milk jug. Totally missed that.
So I'm up to some just really trying to hit the last few darkest parts of shading that I need to get in to really articulate some of the major things in this drawing. So up here, all the shadow just underneath her, her cheek. Let's see. I don't know what got caught in my pencil there, but I'm going to erase that because that is way too. Okay. And then maybe a little more work on the edge of the sleeve here. Just to help delineate where the sleeve ends and the wall behind it begins. So it's funny, like I was talking about beginning of this session, most people start with contours and that is an excellent place to start. It's really easy to recognize, helps you put things together, but I have a way of sort of finishing with contours, just little embellishing marks, usually some of the darker strokes that I make that just do the extra work of articulating the form just a little bit more. So now I'm just working underneath the nose, all the shadow underneath there. Now that is and I also try to get things harmonious, harmonious talking specifically about the shadows. So I see that, you know, I got these darks here in my drawing, this dark on the front of, of her. I want to make these shadows on the far right edge of her. Uh, you know, properly dark, as dark as they deserve to be to help articulate the form, but also just make all of these marks look like they're they're really living in the same world. Uh, 
one. But. All right, so just a heads up on time. There's about six minutes left in the session. So maybe if you haven't yet, I suggest maybe taking a look, taking a, you know, leaning back a little bit, taking a little bit of distance from your drawing, take a look at the whole thing, wonder yeah. to yourself, what could I do with these last remaining few minutes to, to bring a little balance to my image? Okay. All right. It's amazing how, you know, there's actually a lot more work that I need to do in her forehead now that I'm looking at it. There we go. And one last little touch under here. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that may be about as far as I take mine with the time that we have. There's still a couple more minutes left. Mm -hmm. So with these last couple minutes, just want to remind everyone, if you are um, getting value from this practice hour, please consider making a donation to support the Leo Marshute School um, at the link that I have dropped in the chat at the beginning of this program. Um, if you are curious about some of the guiding principles behind how I draw or just refamiliarizing yourself with the basics of drawing for your own practice, uh, I am offering a drawing course with the Marshute School all online this March. You can learn more about that at the link I'm dropping in the chat right now. And if you're if you're completely over online learning and you like to be out there in the world feeling a little extra adventurous this year, I highly recommend considering a trip going flying all the way to Venice, Italy and painting <laughs> in one of the most beautiful places in the world before it sinks underwater. Um, they're leading a trip. I believe there's already a half dozen or more intrepid painters who are going to spend a week in Venice um, painting the beautiful just architecture and um, waterscapes that are there. I've done it twice with them. It is easily some of the most memorable experiences I've had painting. Um, so if that's your thing, go for it. If you're not there yet, but you do want a little, you know, uh, refresher course with some basics in drawing, I will be available online um, Sundays this March via an online class called Revisiting Rembrandt. All right, everyone. So just last like 30 seconds or so, I'm going to then take away the image and we can all take a moment just to take see what other people have done. Oh, some people are already holding up their stuff. Josette. Nice work. Nice round, round, beautiful here. I'm going to spotlight this for a moment. Nice 
round volumes there. I love how you've left the light and the shading really soft. Nice work there. Okay, and Judith has gone full on portrait. That's a lovely way to 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 manage this exercise as well. Yeah, keep that there for a second, Judith. That is really nice. Really nice shading. Really nice use of the of the of the the paper to be the light and that shadow, that prominent shadow underneath her cheek. I think you've done a really good job. Like the whole everything I mentioned about harmony of shadows, you really got it going on, it seems. So Really nice work. And I know you are into portraits, so it kind of makes sense that you skip the whole everything below the shoulders and just go for yeah, the, the rest of the body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Screw it. Who's a what's the milk there for? Just just draw her face. Um, but that's what this is for. I'm happy that, you know, people can um people can use this time and the subjects that I provide to do to to work on what is important and meaningful for them. Looks like Alice has done some watercolor. Lovely. I like the, yeah, look at that blue down in there. Yeah. And that warm, nice earth tone for the shadow on the left. Nice work. Did you, uh, it, it appears, did you do some pencil drawing, Alice, first? Or did you just, uh, is, is that all watercolor? I can't quite tell from the small image I see. A few, uh, just a few tiny strokes to uh -huh. get the, the, the key uh, placement of the body. And then I went straight to paint. Wow. Great. All right. Cool. All right. So everyone, I, it is about time that we wrap up. I am going to remove the image, but I will ask one last time if everyone could just hold up their work from today. Gorgeous. Thank you. Nice work, Panam. Okay. And Lorraine, gorgeous. Nice work, Mary. I see you there. And to all my um, around town friends, um, I will be back in D.C. in April um, and I will be dropping in both the Georgetown and the um, Addis Israel sessions so that I can say hi and catch up with all of you. Um, all right. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I really enjoyed doing this with all of you. I hope that you have gotten um, some, um, you know, some valuable time to practice. I look forward to doing it with you all next month. If you have my email, oh, here, last couple things. If you have my email um, or if you follow me on Instagram, send me the images. I love seeing them. I'll share them with the Marshoot School too um, so we can show all the other people in these lovely art communities the work that we're making and hopefully have some more join us next month. Um, yeah, until then, <laughs> have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, it's only the afternoon where you are. It is already evening where I'm calling in from in Dublin. Um, but all of you stay in touch. Uh, I might see some of you in class this week. I might see some of you in the next session. Um, either way, pleasure as always painting and drawing with you all. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing this again this Thank month, you. Nick. Thank yeah. you. Wonderful work, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next time. Great. Ciao. Bye. Bye.